Hello guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are with another kit review for you today. And this is a 148 scale skunk model, skunk models workshop, R11 US NATO fuel truck. Now, I saw this when it first came out a couple of years ago, a few years ago now. I thought that's interesting, and this popped up on eBay. It was a fairly good price, so I thought I'm going to get it because... It's unusual. It's an unusual model. It's an unusual scale to be building a vehicle in. As far as I'm concerned, my my sort of thing is 35th. Um, so I thought I'd, um, you know, I, I thought I'd have, have a go. So this is a a kit from Skunk Models Workshop, as we know. Now I believe they have connections with Kinetic, and also I can see it on the box somewhere. It's um, Lucky Model as well, which is a um, a seller over in China that sells kits at a great price and trouble is these days with the cost of delivery and stuff it often works out no cheaper than buying it from your local shop but anyway um <clears throat> so basically it's 148 scale we've got a length of 244 millimeters a width of 60 millimeters a height of 60 millimeters and it's 130 plus parts it's saying down here decals designed by bison decals i've never heard of them and they're printed by Cartograph, have heard of them, which means they'll probably be brilliant. And it's showing here we've got markings for a US vehicle. Um, as far as I know, this is only used by the US. I've done a little bit of research. Uh, there are three generations of the R11 fuel truck. Uh, the first was 1989 to 1991, which was an Oshkosh vehicle. The second generation, they, they started delivery in 1994, which was basically based on a Volvo truck with a Covatec uh, fuel tanker part. And then the third generation was 2004, which is the international um, truck manufacturer with the same Covatec fuel system on it. Now, I tell you this because this is the third generation truck. So if you're going to use this in a diorama with an F-16 like they have here, and you're depicting something from, say, 1990, then this is no good for you because this was only delivered to the Air Force from 2004 onwards. So uh, worth remembering. Um, just a little bit of um, technical. It holds 6,000 gallons. Um, so basically you need six of these to fill up a B-52. And it can deliver 600 gallons a minute. So that's um, that's amazing. So, um, yeah, I said you need six of these to fill up a B-52. They wouldn't generally use fuel tankers to fill a B-52. But I have actually seen a picture of an AN-124 with, like, I think it was five or six fuel tankers all lined up, filling it up on a remote airfield somewhere. So um, I guess it does happen. So looking around the box, uh, we can see on the side here, the kit number is 62001. Um, so we've got a super detailed suspension, one piece slide molded engine hood, uh, realistic interior details and open or closed refueling panel. Um, it's also saying on here we've got a six cylinder turbocharged engine that is liquid cooled allowing the trucks to operate in hot places such as Iran and Afghanistan without overheating. So, um, sorry, Iraq and Afghanistan without overheating. Got some images there of the real thing. Going around to the end of the box. Um, just basically same again with the uh, picture from the front telling us about here some health and safety stuff 2013 there we go I said it was a couple of years ago seven years ago now like me. and then uh, same again on the end there so opening the box it's an opening top opening box when it came in the post it was a lot bigger than I was expecting I was expecting to find something like a you know a, a much smaller box than this so we can see in here I have had a look inside the box but not sort of unwrapped anything we've got individually wrapped sprues so we've got um a sprue there got a massive clear sprue that's incredible see in the size of my hand that's that's a really big clear sprue for a for a 48 scale kit um and the clear parts do look quite nice and then we've got another sprue down here with the separately molded cab in there you can see and then we've got another sprue down here which is obviously determining the box size We've got our tyres, the wheels, everything on there. So we've got sprues there. We've got some instructions. And we've got some decals. So um, let me get all this uh, unbagged and stuff and then we'll have a look at the kit. Okay, so our usual standard of doing reviews and stuff. We'll start off by having a look at the instructions. So on the front of the instructions here, I've never actually built a Skunk Models kit. I've, I've actually got two two of them. I've got a um, a drone in 48 scale as well, somewhere in my stash. Um, 
But basically we've got the uh, just a plain A4 sized black and white printed instruction sheet which is a booklet. So we've got our sprues here you can see aftermarket services card, some health and safety stuff here. We've got our legends here which is worth um, remembering and then their recommended tools. So it's just a knife, tweezer, side cutter and cement. Tube cement? Who uses that anymore? So um, going into the instruction manual we can see that it's actually uh, side on so I need to check my camera make sure you're still in there right you're still in the shot so um so basically we're starting off with the interior it looks like it's quite a nice detailed interior for a 48 scale kit and uh we're building the mirrors so it's a bit unusual so we're doing the seats the dash the steering wheel and everything and then we're building the mirrors and then we're moving on to the cab but fitting all the windows in nice to see the windows fit from the outside in so may be easy to paint everything and then fit the windows at the end after you finish the after you finish the build sorry you're probably out of shot there so uh, yeah there we go that's the um and the mirrors going on there so moving swiftly on we've got the um the fuel uh delivery system there i guess you could add some plumbing and stuff if you want to really liven it up and then we've got the option of having the door the roller shutter door up or down as you can see there and then we're building that into a box section then we've got some mud guards with um, mounting uh, beams, outriggers, and then tubular outriggers at the back. And we've got mud flaps front and back. Then we're straight in with the, the main fuel tank part, which is top and bottom, so we'll have a nice seam to deal with there. We've got some lights going in the, I'm assuming that's the front bumper. And then we're going to build up the chassis. It looks like the chassis is a one-piece unit with side pieces added to it, so that should be uh, nice and easy for the newer modelers out there to keep it all nice and square and everything. Then we're going to add all our um, suspension detail. Um, we've got some, so we've got twin rear axles, adding the differentials and everything onto them. Then we've got our fuel tanks, toolboxes, fire extinguisher, or air filter, whatever that is going on there. And then we've got some air tanks. It's looking very, very detailed for a 48 scale kit, I must be honest, guys. And then we've got the prop shafts going in there. Um, front axle with steering gear, looks like it doesn't have steering wheels. The actual um, front axle is a one-piece moulding by the look of things. So a little bit of surgery just to put a bit of angle on the wheels. It always makes these things look so much better. And then number stage seven, we're finishing off. We're adding all the wheels and tyres. I did notice we had plastic tyres, so that's a nice touch rather than having vinyl tyres. And then here's a, um, a close-up shot there showing their part where part B21 goes. Where's part B21? It's not there. I guess it's it's only there. It's not showing you B21 over here. So we've got a ladder being built up there. And then the um, whatever that is, that thing there, some sort of vent, I'm guessing, um, going on the back. And then we're into our painting instructions. And this is something I did notice earlier. It just says gloss green, gloss black, um, black plastic details and aluminium. So, I mean, yeah, great. Uh, so parts you're going to leave black, um, parts you're going to paint gloss black, gloss green, and aluminium. No FS codes or anything, so God only knows what colour they should be. I can see we've got three options here. Let's get that decal sheet out of the way. And then here we've got the, um, this is um, stone and al aluminium. So um, this is obviously going to be a uh, tanker working over in Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever. Not sure if that would have been a, a sort of water washable whitewash paint you know that just washed off or or if it actually was painted that color and then we've got again the gloss green gloss black black plastic details so this is the u.s air force jp8 plus 100 u.s air force jp8 f34 and then we've got u.s air force jp8 f34 now i did read somewhere it's a little bit careful what you're doing here because apparently the US Air Force or the JP-8100 fuel is for civilian aircraft only so not too sure about that check your references you're going to need to do some um, checking up because um, basically as I say with those paint call outs gloss green you know it could be anything from I mean here's Tamiya X5 gloss green and here's Tamiya X28 gloss green you know um you need to be careful when you're choosing your colours. I've actually put a request out on ARC for um, 
for what colours it should be. So maybe somebody can help me on there. So here we've got our deco sheet. I'm going to check if I haven't got any light reflecting in here. So very, very busy deco sheet for such a, a small model. Um, but um, very, very crisp, very, very clean. Printed by Cartograph, so you know they're going to be good. You can see we've got some um, carrier film on there to deal with. But, you know, if the model's been painted gloss, I then get a gloss varnish that will blend in beautifully. Sorry about the state of my hands, guys. I've been working on the Land Rover and, you know, working on the chassis. And my, my fingernails and hands are taking a hell of a beating. So um, there we go. We've got some stickers there showing the uh, hazards for fuel and everything, for um, fire and everything. No smoking within 50 feet. Blimey. Cargo fire, avoid water. Okay, so that's um, obviously don't use water if, you, if you've got a fire. And then we've got some white squares there. I'm not sure what they're going to be for. And then, again, flammable jet fuel. No smoking within 50 feet. All very nice indeed. It's going to look lovely when it's built up with all those on. So there's our decals. Let's have a look at some plastic. Okay, so uh, starting off here with the cab, which is either, I'm not sure if it snapped off the sprue or if that's the way it was intended, but it looks like that's the way they're intended. But um, lovely cab. It's moulded in a, a green plastic, as you can see. It's got a slightly grainy finish to it, so it'll need a bit of a prime and a polish if you are going to go for a high gloss finish. Um, I think it would, personally, I think it would look better with a matte, matte finish on it, but... Um, you can see we've got some nice detail on there. There's no grill detail or anything, so you may want to be um, looking at doing something there. Um, but no, very, very nice indeed. Nice one-piece slide moulded cab there. Um, obviously, you've got the back to add. But um, and as you can see, I, I can't, you can see it there. You've got that grainy finish to the plastic. But uh, overall, very, very nice indeed. We've got a mould seam across the top there. Have to be dealt with. That shouldn't pose too many problems. And then we've got this sprue here. Very, very... It's very heavy plastic. It feels very dense. Um, unusual colour, almost like the old Revell kits. Like the old Revell B52 was this green colour, wasn't it? But, um, yeah, very kind of... It feels quite greasy. It needs a wash. But it's very... It feels quite dense. But it's neither hard nor soft. It's probably very nice to work with. Um, let's just hope it's not like the Meng green plastic, which is uh, bloody awful to work with, as we all know. So, on this sprue here, looking at this side here, we've got some lovely detail there on the fuel delivery area. There's a hose there that you could do with cutting that out and replace it with some real hose, I guess, because I doubt it would be a dead straight line. Um, we've got our tyres here up the side. We've got the... that'll be the, um, the cab floor with the under wheel arch details there we've got the dashboard there i'm not sure if we had a decal we didn't have a decal for the dashboard so you'll have to do a bit of trick painting on there we'll use some aftermarket decals i've got some air scale aircraft decals i generally use on um on car or whatever truck decal uh, truck dashboards you could just put something in because it's so small you look through the windows you're not going to see it anyway but um seats there with some nice rib detail in them and then we've got the some nice um, cooling vent detail on there. Got the ladder on the back. A little bit flashy. Um, little tiny, you know, mould seams and stuff and little tiny areas of flash. But uh, no real big ejector pin marks or anything, which is nice to see. Um, you know, they've put ejector pin marks in the floor there, but they're underneath the seats. Ejector pin marks there in the back, so you're not going to see them. Nothing on these, so I'm not sure if both sides of them are going to be visible, but um, there's no ejector pin marks on there. No ejector pin marks on the back. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. Um, shame there's no uh, tyre lettering. There's no, um, you know, uh, Firestone or Goodyear or anything on the tyres. But uh, I'll give you a close-up look. There's your instrument panel, your dashboard. That's really nice for 48 scale kits. Um, it's lovely, especially considering it's age. It's seven years old now. It's it's not sort of latest high-tech stuff. You've got the front bumper there, a bit of sinkage in there. But, um, Nothing a bit that's missed a surface or won't sort. Exhaust manifold there and draw that pipe out. That'll look lovely. And then we've got the um, the roller shutter doors there on there. And on the other side we've got another one. So not exactly sure what's going on there. And those tyres are pretty solid. But mustn't grumble. At least they're not vinyl tyres, eh guys? And they have got some 
tread detail around the edge but nothing in the middle so yeah maybe if there's something on the aftermarket maybe worth getting if there is something available but uh, I very much doubt there is second sprue here it has no sort of oh this is sprue C um, again it's that same plastic obviously they would, would have molded it in the same and down here we've got our one piece transfer box and prop shaft um, assembly is that a transfer box I'm guessing it is and we've got the the top of the fuel tank with its um, sort of mesh grill there to walk on which is a nice touch got some molded in detail there which could probably do with some super detailing um, here I'm looking this this is look, looking like air brakes and shock absorbers there you've got the rear mud guards there um, so this gonna be a dummy gearbox I'm guessing and then we've got our axles and differential details as the front axle there with the integral steering box by the look of it and this is that one piece chassis I was showing you where you're going to glue the chassis rails along the side of it so you've got like this sort of this kind of grid to, to glue everything to so that's a nice touch it's going to keep everything nice and square but we can see on the top of here that lovely detail on there to, to walk on the grating and then very nicely moulding you again it's got that sort of slight graininess to it the plastic we've got our differentials detail there you can see under my finger and then we've got rear axles front axle with the steering box and everything yeah very nice that's it badly needs a wash it's very oily and then finally the the last green sprue we've got obviously the uh, underside of the main fuel tank we've got our wheels here now I'm noticing, there we go, yeah, they're, they're, these are obviously the front wheels because we've got some bulk detail around them. Um, again, we've got more tyres, but again, no tread detail on them. Um, air tanks, the steering wheel there. It's got a little bit of a sink mark in it, but not going to worry about that. Um, part of the exhaust system, I'm guessing. And then we've got another few bits and pieces of greeblies here. We've got the steering column there with the uh, indicator stalk on the side. Um, there's that B21 that it talked about earlier. I'm guessing that's the bottom of the steering column. And then we've got very, very finely moulded um, frames for our mirrors. Um, again, chassis rail there. We've got some nice bolt detail and spring detail on the chassis rail, which is a nice touch. We've got some little shackles there, little towing eyes and stuff. Um, some sort of railing. Um, again, that's, that's nice. We've got integral moulded in step there, which is a nice touch. And then you can see on here we've got our rear wheels with the bulk detail on the inside. So if I give you a close up look at them, there's your rear wheels. With your bulk detail in them. And then your front wheels has the have the bulk detail on the outside. And again, tires with no tread detail. And the chassis, or if you're in America, the frame. It's got some nice bulk detail and stuff on it. Again, like I say, guys, for a 48 scale kit, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, if it was 35th scale, you'd think it was quite basic. But um, come on, camera, focus. There we are. It's all very nice. So finally, we've got the clear sprue. I left this in the bag so it doesn't get scratched. All the sprues do come in resealable bags, which is nice. Um, if like me, you, if like me, you sell your kit sometimes. And it's nice to um, have resealable bags because you can sell them as as unopened, if you like. When you've got bags cut open, it tends to devalue your models a little bit. So, clear parts. Um, there's lots of lights and bits and pieces on here. I guess we've got all the uh, lights around the top of the cab and everything, like here. All the lights around there, and then we've got reflectors on the wheel arches and more reflectors there. So that's... Uh, that's what all those are. Um, the windscreen here, rear screen there. The windscreen looks a little bit sort of thick and kind of distorted-ish. If I just bring this up to the camera and get the focus, I don't know if you can see that, but you've got a little bit of um, a little bit of distortion in there. But uh, I'm sure it's going to be fine. It could be a lot worse. Um, again, side windows there—they've got a bit of distortion in them as well. You can see the lines of my cutting mat under there. Again, you can see the lines of my cutting mat under there being slightly distorted. Got the rear window there, you can see again, slight amount of distortion. But, um, you know, no one's going to be looking at it that close up, I don't think. 
got those front windows there which are a little bit suspect but um, it's going to look great when it's all put up together so these windows go in from the outside I can only assume they've got like a rubber seal detail around the outside of them we'll have to look at that when we uh, when we come to make it but very very nice so we'll put that straight back in its bag so it doesn't get damaged something I will say of note with these resealable bags I've noticed I can't remember the company now but they use bags where the glue stays on the bag which is really really nice especially when it comes to decals because I watched one of Phil Floyd's reviews the other day and as he pulled the decals out they put them with the decals face up and they stuck to the glue and it's like it's peeling off and we go oh no you know terrible but um yeah some companies have a glue strip on the bag so when you open it up the flap is non-adhesive so you slide your parts in and out with no problems but um that's just a, a by the by so there we go that is the 148 scale let's move the light 148 scale r11 us nato fuel us us nato fuel truck from scope model um really really nice i'm not sure if this was ever re-released in any other boxing i know some of the scope model stuff comes out in a kinetic boxing and then it also comes out in revel boxings um i'm not sure if this was ever released by anyone else so uh interesting to see they're showing on the box front there the tires actually have no tread so <laughs> whether they have no tread in real life or not i don't know but um we shall see there's some photos on the side there and i can't really make it out but uh i need to do some research get the colors right and everything and then uh and then we'll get this put together so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed that if you did like it please give me a like and if you haven't seen the channel before please subscribe um lots and lots of stuff going on and i've got some i've been buying a few little bits and pieces lately so i've got some reviews coming up for you so uh, thanks for watching i'll see you all soon bye for now happy modeling